All right, today we're gonna to start talking about our yeasty rolls uh, that we're gonna be testing and hopefully um, rolling out nationwide. Uh, so we have an ounce and one, one and a quarter ounce yeasty roll. You can see they come in packed, frozen, simply break them apart. Work from frozen. So to get them started, full or half sheet pan, depending on your volume and those sort of things, we're gonna lay them out six by four, so a total of 24, and then we're gonna do six by eight on a full sheet pan for a total of 48. And you're gonna put them on the pan, leaving approximately one inch between each. So we're gonna fill the pan. And they don't have to be extremely perfect, but as close as you can and even. So after that's done, we take pan coating, liberally spray them, sides, tops. So that'll keep a barrier, keep them from drying out and also from sticking because we're gonna wrap them in a piece of saran wrap, plastic wrap. Okay, so from this point, we're gonna label them two day use by and we're gonna put them in the refrigeration and the covered speed rack. So, they're usable after 24 hours, 18 to 24 hours, and up to 48 hours, so on day two. Anything beyond that, they'll start to dry and crust, and it's really not optimal. So uh, from that point again, we're, for today's purposes, we're just gonna go into the cooler. So these are some that I've done, uh, done yesterday. You can see this is 24 hours, so same exact process, laid out uh, 24 to a sheet, uh, sprayed, and you can see that they're still pretty, pretty dense. No proofing, um, basically no proofing will happen under refrigeration because yeast needs basically heat and humidity to activate. Uh, so from this point, this is a very important part. So this is where we're gonna get into a little more detail. We're gonna take this and we're gonna put it into 160 to 165 sham with a pan of water. Uh, the water will create humidity, which will actually help the proofing, uh, expedite the proofing process. Also keep moisture, keep them from drying out. Uh, so this is, you know, optimal for pos conditions uh, based off of like what we keep our shams at for, for holding hot foods and things like that. And this whole entire process is time, temperature, and sensory, right? So we're looking for the time, which is about 45 to 50 minutes, and temperature of about 160 to 165 degrees. And then the sensory part we'll get into, I'll show what exactly we're looking for. So yeah, so we're gonna go to the sham. So we have our pan, just a simply uh, a metal pan with hot water. And then you put it in the bottom of the sham. Add your dough. Set your timer, again 45 to 50 minutes. 160 to 165 degrees and uh, basically wait. Again, these are under optimal conditions, right? So basically, if you're not opening and closing the sham constantly or you're not introducing hot foods uh, or you know something that's steaming, you know, creating additional moisture. So basically what I'm saying is like that you could tweak, it may affect the time and temperature, right? So again, if you're adding humidity, it may expedite the process. Um, you know, so it's very important, this is where the sensory part will come in, it's very important that you watch the dough and what it's doing, uh, you know, so you can check it occasionally, maybe at the halfway point, um, and I actually have some proofing, so I'll pull it out and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So we're going to let these go just a couple more minutes, but, uh, so what you're looking for is about three times the size, right, from what we originally had. So these are proofed. Yeast is activated. Um, 
So size is the first thing, so you're visually looking for that. The other thing is, <clears throat> excuse me, the other thing is, so you want, you do not want there to be any resistance, right? So you poke it and you want it to remain concaved. Like, so you, want, you don't want it to spring back. If it springs back, that means it's not done proofing. So it needs additional time. These are really close. So we're actually gonna go with it. So at this point, we're gonna go from the sham or the proofer and we're gonna go in a 350 degree oven. That's a convection oven, not a conventional. Convection oven, I believe, is an additional 25 degrees. Uh, so that's basically just follow directions on the box as far as time and temperature as it pertains to a uh, specific oven. So now we're gonna go into the, uh, into the oven, 10 to 12 minutes. And this may require you to rotate halfway through the process, through the baking process depending on your oven. Uh, I've noticed that full sheet pans have a tendency, depending like this oven specifically, hot spots are on the edges. So it's very important that you rotate it or one side will get significantly darker than the other to the point where they're very questionable as far as using. So yeah, we'll wait for those to get done and go from there. A few minutes later. So we've reached our 10, we're about 10 and a half minutes right now. Uh, I'm gonna check the rolls. They look pretty nice. So again, all we're looking for is a uh, even brown across, across the top. Uh, and again, back to the oven, depending on your oven, if you're using large sheet pans, you may have to rotate. Uh, so from this point, we're gonna have our butter substitute or prep. Um, and you can either use a pastry brush or a spray bottle for application. Um, for today's purposes, I'm gonna use a pastry brush. brush. So, pretty liberally, top, sides. You're gonna brush them, or spray them. And this should be done while they're hot, so right out of the oven. And right now, they're uh, extraordinarily hot. So if you do need them immediately, you can use them, but recommend a little bit of a resting period because they're also very soft, as you can see. The butter gives them nice sheen, makes them soft, introduces a little flavor. Uh, let's find it. And you can see, just looking for the inside, they're very soft, very hot, fluffy, not dense. So that, that's part of the, from the proofing process, allowing the yeast to rise and work and do its magic. Um, if you underproof them, they'll be a little bit, they'll be a little harder, not as soft on the interior. If you overproof them, um, they'll, they'll be much larger, but you'll get air pockets and they'll kind of collapse on each other on, on themselves. So it's not, not really conducive. Um, so from this point, obviously if you pull them out of the oven and you butter them and you need them, you can place them on the bar in a hot well, fitted with a roll top lid, depending on your configuration of the salad bar, it will either be front opening or side opening. Um, it held at about 110 degrees, if you can get that low. It's just, it allows us for a longer holding period for about 30 minutes. Um, but what we're really suggesting and hoping everyone decides to do is that these can be bulked, right? So you can, you can proof them, and, but you can pan them obviously in bulk, bake them, proof them, bake them, you know, depending on your service. So let's say lunch, break it into two, lunch and dinner. So you could do eight trays of these, over lunch and hold them at ambient temperature, AKA room temperature in a on a covered speed rack. So when you need them, what you'll do, these are some rolls that I've done earlier. You can see pretty much the same thing. These actually proofed a little bit longer than these, uh, but they're still nice. Um, so again, at ambient temperature, you're gonna take these and you're gonna put them in the oven for two minutes. That's all they take because again, they're not cold. So the idea is that we can hold these up at up to 24 hours at room temperature, as long as they're covered. Uh, that's the most important part. Um, if you're, you can carry them over to the next day's service, so let's say at the end of the night you have two, two full trays of rolls, uh, cover them as long as they have to be cool. I don't recommend pulling them off the salad bar, um, but I do recommend saving them, you know, any that are on the uh, speed rack per se. Uh, pull them, cover them, place them on a speed rack, and they should be good to go 
you know, again, up to 24 hours from the baking period. So after two minutes, hot, we're gonna reapply the butter. At this point, they go in a pan or go to the salad bar and uh, ready for service. So just a real brief overview. Um, so again, we're gonna pull the, ro uh, the, the rolls or the dough from frozen. We're gonna tray them either six by four or six by eight. Uh, for half a uh, parchment lined sheet pan, apply pan coating, uh, cover them on a covered speed rack. And that again, for that is we don't want any air to get to these because they will crust and they, they just won't eat as well. Um, and from that point, 24 to 48 hours is usable, use by date. And so then you're gonna pull them, you're gonna proof them. Again, this is the most important part. It's kind of the make or break deal. Uh, time, temperature, sensory. So time, 45 to 50 minutes at 160 to 165 degrees. And you're looking for the triple the size. And again, when you poke them, you don't want any resistance. You want it to remain concaved or, you know, your fingerprint or whatever it is to remain in the dough. And then you're gonna go to the oven for 10 to 12 minutes, apply butter, serve or hold at ambient temperature, reheat for two minutes, reapply butter, serve. Um, and it, I do want to back up on the proofing process is that the, uh, the pan of water, again, is very, very important. So that's it.